Welcome, welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Third Hour of Power. Uh, my name is Grady of This Morning Life. Uh, third Hour of Power is a podcast dedicated to reviewing the lessons from the Third Hour of Church, particularly the lessons from teachings of the prophets. Um, this year, we're covering Ezra Taft Benson and 16, which is the elderly in the church. And I, uh, I invited back as my guests, uh, James and Brian of 25th Month. And uh, I'm so glad they're here with us again. Thank you guys for joining us. Hey, this is Brian. We're stoked to be here. Uh, this is James. Thanks, Grady. Thanks so much for joining us. Why don't you guys tell us just a, a little bit about what 25th Month does and what that means? Yeah, this is Brian Hatch, co-founder of the 25th Month. And, and what we do is we help the transition home for those return missionaries become a transformational experience. We want to help return missionaries figure out all the things that get overwhelming when they get home from career and education and marriage and dating and all those things that kind of pile up on us that everybody's asking us about. And we hold live trainings. We do online trainings, how to set this foundational uh, period of their life so that they can find happiness and success in life. And, and we just, we absolutely love the return missionaries. That's what we do. So when I was uh, coming home from being a missionary, we kind of had like a, a, a dating um, I guess a dating twist on the investigator statuses where, you know, as a missionary, you had the finding pool, the teaching pool, <laughs> and then the baptizing pool. Um, and then as dating, we had the, you know, we had the flirting pool, and then we had the hanging out pool and the dating pool, and then there was like the one person that was in the engagement pool. Is there is that kind of the, the, the premise for the dating section? As long as you don't bring multiple people into that the engagement pool, you're you're in you're in the right frame of mind for sure. Okay, good, <laughs> good. <laughs> well, good deal. Well, th this lesson again, it's uh, it's chapter 16, which is the elderly in the church, and uh, I was it was hard for me to to kind of go over this lesson because it, it really does speak a lot to people that are elderly um, but there are some some key things in there I thought were really important so if you're a if you're a teacher and you're struggling like with this like I was um, I think we're gonna have some good things for you to be in this lesson and if you're a high priest hey you're gonna be covered no matter what um, but I know Brian we were talking offline you said you had some really good insights on this lesson why don't you go ahead and lead us off yeah well I I have a I have a special relationship with the elderly if you, I, I, I kind of hesitate to say that um, I have is, there, is there a nice way to say elderly is there a, I, another I, more PC phrase yeah, I hope that people that are elderly don't feel bad when we say that because I don't know what else to say, but my grandfather is one of my best friends, and uh, I have so much love and appreciation for what he's taught me in my life, and so when I kind of go through this lesson, I learned a lot about you know things that he's challenging with or, or, or struggling or dealing with at this time in his life, but really when it comes down to it, I think there's a principle of, of, of dreaming, and and I, and I talk about that a lot, that we, we, we look forward, we look forward to this future in our lives, and what I loved about this lesson is is that's what it did for me. Even even though I, I I get that I connect with my grandfather in this one, but for me it was like, all right, Brian, how are you preparing to get these things done? My name is Brian, by the way. But but how am I getting things done to make sure that when I get to this stage of my life, that these things aren't aren't such a struggle, or or that these things are just built in. I I, I worked on that from the get go, and so um, I just love that there's a list of of items, and and uh, I'd love to hear your guys' feedback on the, on a couple of those items. But I really like that for me it really got me to think forward and think about okay what do I need to do today so that those things that the that the prophet's asking of me when I'm that age um, are easy that's my thought on it anyways yeah this has been two weeks in a row with lists I think we're really fortunate here I think the church is really jumping on that uh, that social media bandwagon here on the list it talks about doing temple service uh, going missions uh, serving in callings and those things can be prohibitive if you aren't financially strong and so that's a good point to make sure that we're doing now at a younger age uh, so that way we're in a good position later in life to do those types of things. Yeah, you know, one of the things that me and my wife were talking about tonight is that we were talking about just the idea of provident living and an agency and how, you know, when we are wise stewards of we need to make sure that we're doing everything we can to protect that for the future so that we can continue to, to serve you know if we don't take care of our bodies um, and they deteriorate faster than they were naturally intended to 
we can't serve as well. If we are not wise with our money, we don't have the money saved up to be. We might end up working to our grave and can't serve the way that we could serve before. Um, that was really part of what brought me and Chrissy out to Arizona. Uh, we were in Southern California, which is extremely beautiful and a wonderful place to live. But it's also a very expensive place to live, and we were barely making it. And we thought, you know what? At this point, we're not going to have anything to retire with. We're not going to be able to, you know, afford to send our kids to school or even missions. You know, we're we're we're, we're going to have a tough time with this. And we thought, you know, we need to make a change to make sure that we can have money set aside for the future. And so we made the choice that we were going to make some sacrifices and live where today it was 110 degrees, um, because we wanted to make sure that when the time came and we were ready, that the financial burden wouldn't be there for us so that we could serve freely. Well, I think, uh, I mean, we're definitely hitting a financial uh, cord very hard here, but on that same accord, it says that you, you should be able to plan frugally for the years following full-time employment. And I think, you know, President Benson, when he wrote this, um, you know, that, that's a while ago, and, and I know that he had future uh, foresight, but the people that are living right now, there's a lot more of them that have to work way later on in life. And so that the years following full-time employment is, is becoming a harder uh, situation. And that's what's limiting and, and preventing people from serving missions and doing extra things they want to. Even if that's just going to see your grandkids that live in a different state. Um, there's a lot to, to, to figure out there financially. And I think that if you set those foundations at a young age that you're, you're rocking and rolling. I mean, and, and one of the things that I really loved about this lesson, it talked about um, that we're that uh, elderly, elderly, I feel bad about that, is <laughs> they're, they're supposed to collect and write family histories. I think about that in my youth, in, in, in my age right now, or if I was a return missionary right off my mission, if I'm writing in my journal, I'm writing every day, how easy is that going to be when I'm 70, 80 years old to compile my, my, my life history, family history? Simple. But if you don't do it, it's, it's like, oh, man, I'm like 80, and I don't remember what I did when I was 12. I got no idea. And, uh, and I, I just love that it's, it's all about like doing the things that it says right here, no matter what your age is. Work on each one of these, these bullet points, and that way, man, you can have a future like magical and amazing. I just love it. I love it. Yeah, my wife Christy, she um, she has kind of become the adopted family historian for my side of the family. Um, she's been so great. Um, all of our grandparents now have passed away, but before they passed away, she was so good about tracking them down, getting video, asking them about their lives. And so there are things that we have that were nowhere else because she was, you know, a pioneer in that. Um, she even you know helped our, her grandma uh, on her side to be better about writing her memoir. So she's we've got a whole bunch of history from. Her her that she had written um, that was stuff that Christy was really paramount and saying, hey, I want you to write this stuff down, Grandma. I want to have this. Um, you know, That's a, a big part of it. And I think the most important part here is number seven on that list, which is to render Christ-like service. You know, uh, part, all these things that we, we talk about, you know, financial independence, um, physical independence, it's so that we can bless other people and it allows us to give those blessings. And I think that's such an important thing to do. And, and I think probably a more worthwhile thing to do with your last years, you know, whether that's 20 of your last years or five, but, you know, to be in the temple and to feel close to the Spirit, to be able to be close to your grandchildren and share with them the gospel. Um, there is um, one of, so I've, because I have no living grandparents, I've, ad I've adopted a bunch of grandparents um, in wards that I've been in. And one of my, one of my favorite grandmas, because they're all my favorite, is Grandma Nan. And I love that Grandma Nan, I think it's every Thursday, she goes to the elementary school in the neighborhood and just reads with kids. You know, none of her kids go to that school. There's no specific tie except for there's kids in the wards there. But, you know, she just wants to go and just serve in her community. And that's something that she finds worthwhile. And it's a blessing to the community because she's been able to do that. And it's really about, you know, two parts. There's there's leaving a legacy in the, that will follow. And think of the impact that she's having on these kids. Um, my life, when people have done things to help me or serve me and it really makes you want to be a better person it makes you want to do good things for somebody else and and at that you know at that age you can have 20 30 40 years of life still to live where you're you're giving back 
to the world or doing great things. So absolutely, like rendering service or doing Christ-like things is such a powerful thing. Even at, at that age, especially, like who doesn't love a grandma or grandpa, you know, and, and appreciate their time? It's it's fantastic. I think if you get into your 60s and you're giving back and you're giving service back to the community, good on you. You've done the right thing. You've set up a foundation in your life that it, that has made it awesome for you. And and that's why, I, like I say, I, I focus on that that 20 year old that. Those are the most like selfish, not in a negative light, but a selfish decade of your life is figuring your stuff out so that when you're 60, 70, 80, I mean at a minimum, hopefully much b before that, but at least at those periods of time, like the lesson states, you can be doing these things of giving Christ like service. That, that's the top. That's the cream of the crop. You don't, you don't get any better than that. And, and if you prepare and, and are ready for that stage of your life, it's going to be awesome. And if you're not, man, you're going to be working until your fingers are bleeding. I mean, it's it's just gonna be rough, and, and that's why I have such an appreciation for those that have set such good examples for me, and uh, and really working hard and and creating a, an elderly life of, of joy. Yeah. yeah, and in section five in the manual, it kind of helps give us direction too, of how we can show love, and also to care for those who are um, advanced in age, and um, and I, and I love it. One of the things it says here is it says we encourage families to give their elderly parents and grandparents the love, care, and attention that they deserve and I think it's so important that we you know we honor and respect um, our parents our grandparents um, and even those who maybe we've adopted you know whether that's the widow in the ward that maybe doesn't have family that lives nearby um, or just the person is you know that's older that you're just really nice <laughs> There was a, a thing that Chrissy did. My wife, Chrissy, she was with the young women. And I don't know how it got started um, in the ward to just go there and give her service and, you know, and to be kind to her. And it was such a neat thing because Christy and and, um, and this woman, they became friends. And she always, you know, she talks to me and she just says, you know, I even though we're like 60 years apart, you know, 50 years apart, I mean, I think of her as Heavenly Father sees her that even though there's a big disparity in age right now, when we get to the other side of the veil, we'll be the same and we'll be best friends and it will be great. And so it's just the idea that think that, you know, we're eternal, you know, we're all in different ages, you know, there's babies, there's kids, there's adults, there's older people, there's middle-aged people. And sometimes that causes some rift, but we need to make sure that we're focusing on what we have in common and the fact that we're children of our Heavenly Father and that He loves us and He wants us to be happy and that we should be doing things to make sure that help are getting it to make sure that we are able to lighten their burdens. Totally agreed, man. Well said. All right. Is there anything else you guys want to add to the lesson this week? You know, for, for me, I just, it, it reminded me of a sister um, growing up in my ward who was elderly and she was our door greeter and she would do it with so much of an enthusiasm every Sunday. You were excited to walk in there. She'd give you a big old hug and chance if she could and big smiles. And it really made you feel very welcome walking into that church building. And, and she loved it and she loved people and she made an impact at what felt like warmth and home and unity. And so even just even the little things are, make a great impact of, of her. And, and uh, I remember at a certain time she got to a point where, where uh, she couldn't care of herself and the ward jumped right in to make sure she was taken care of all, you know, for her needs because they just remember all the great things she did. Now, regardless if they do that or not, you, obviously you want to serve and help, but what a great impact she had in, uh, of love and kindness in, in her life. Yeah, well, it certainly makes it easier, you know, to show love to people who have showed love to you. Um, well, certainly. Well, I appreciate you guys for joining us um, this week. Um, why don't you guys take just a moment, just to tell us a little bit about more about the 25th month and what you guys do, and if you guys have anything else coming up soon. This is James. I'm going to take a little chance to talk about. We have an event coming up uh, next month, August 14th and 15th. It's at the Red Mountain Ranch Country Club, and we're inviting return missionaries to come to this event. Uh, we're on six core principles that help in their transition of coming home. We'll talk about spiritual patterns, goal setting, financial management, freedom. Uh, we'll talk about uh, dating to marry, what it looks like, and how to, how to best prepare for it. We're going to talk, we're going to do career counseling, have a career test, for career professionals, like a lawyer, a dentist, a teacher, and so forth, uh, to speak directly to the commissioners so they get feedback on, on what path they may want to take in the future. 
We'll also have um, profess, uh, professional development discussions too on how to improve themselves and become the best, their best. And so this this is an event that we're excited to provide for the return mission. Our event is on August 14th and 15th. If you would like to gift a, a seat to your return missionary, someone in your life that you love and appreciate and want them to get foundation set in their lives when they transition home, uh, go to 25thmonth.com, 25thmonth, M-O-N-T-H dot com. You'll be able to find the order there uh, and be able to jump on and uh, and enter in a special promo code just for Grady's listeners. We, we love Grady and what he's done for, for the church and otherwise. And uh, and that's bring my friends, plural, but that's all lowercase. And that way you can get a, a free ticket to the event, which is ridiculous. So we're excited to have everybody there. But anyways, we, we love you guys. Thank you, Grady, for having us. Yeah, you bet. Plus it includes lunch, so you can't yes. go wrong there. <laughs> now for people that are outside of the East Valley um, or maybe are listening to this on Sunday morning, before it's shared so they've missed it. What's one other thing they should look for on your website? We have video trainings that go over goal setting, that go over dating and marriage, that go over um, financial freedom. We have different uh, video trainings you can find at our website as well. And we've, we've done a thousand surveys of, of return missionaries to find out what is going on in their lives. And it's very, very interesting, this, the stats that we've we found. You can go to our website and download those as well. So um, check us out, 25thmonth.com, and you'll be able to find all the links there. Awesome. So yeah, if you're a state president or you're a bishop and you've got um, elders or, and sisters that are coming home from missions and you want to know how to best help them, um, that's a great resource. I was reading the surveys and I was surprised at some of the results of you know what is what is causing some of our missionaries to go inactive. And uh, it's important that we're proactive on how to prevent that from happening. So Brian and Jamie, I love right, you guys on, and uh, I appreciate it. And um, thank you guys for listening. We are we're really lucky that we have been able to do this for you guys. I love it because um, I get to be kind of the uh, the goody two shoes in elders quorum. People will ask, you know, the teacher will ask who read the lesson, and I'll sheepishly raise my hand. That I read it. <laughs> Um, and, I, and I feel embarrassed, but you know it has helped me to get more out of the, of the lesson, being able to prepare, and I hope we're doing the same thing for you guys. Also, you guys can check out our Benefactors This Week in Mormons where you can learn more about Sunday School. Um, it's called Sunday School Bonanza, and there they talk about the Sunday School lesson, and this week or this year is awesome studying the New Testament, and as we start to get into the epistles, it's going to be a big help for you guys. So on behalf of Brian and James, my name is Grady of This Mormon Life. That is this-mormon-life.com. And on behalf as well, our benefactors, This Week of Mormons, this has been the third hour of power. And until next time, we wish you all a fond adieu.